to this international broadcast of our great, good, and terrible black god, Yahweh, and his son, Yahweh Ben Yahweh. We're broadcasting live from International Headquarters, 2766 Northwest 52nd Street in Miami, Florida, zip code 33147. We, the so-called Black People of America, are the chosen people of Almighty God Yahweh. We are the people of the Old Testament Bible. Prophecy in the Old and New Testament tells us to look for the coming of Yahweh, Ben Yahweh, who would come in his Father's name, Yahweh, St. John 5.43. The so-called black people of America are the most blessed people on earth, for unto us a child is born, unto us the Son, Yahweh, is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, Isaiah 9, 6. I just like to testify to you this morning that Yahweh is God, and besides Yahweh, there is no God. I just like to testify to you today that the great, good, and terrible, black God, Yahweh, the early, true, and living God, Yahweh, has sent his son, Yahweh, Ben Yahweh, to rule with me, the so-called black man of America. I just like to testify to you that Yahweh has sent our Savior, who is here, to redeem us today. I just like to testify to you that our Savior is not only coming, but he's here. I'd like to testify to you that our Savior is here to deliver us and to bring us into our own land. And he ain't just coming no more, but he's here right now, dwelling among you and I today. And in a few minutes, the very one that I'm talking about, the very one that has you and me dressed in white this morning, the very one who has shook up this city, is here, dwelling with you and me right now, who has called the controversy in Miami. Is Yahweh Ben Yahweh who has caused a controversy in a hundred major cities across America? Is Yahweh Ben Yahweh who got the United States government upset? Is Yahweh Ben Yahweh who put all of the towns out of business? Is Yahweh Ben Yahweh who set all black leaders down? Is Yahweh Ben Yahweh who has put the preachers out of business? Is Yahweh our Messiah who is here? to deliver you and me from the hands of the white man. It's Yahweh, our Messiah, who has, is here to deliver us from the brutality of the white man who has treated us evil and afflicted us evil for the past 400 years. It's Yahweh, our Messiah, who has come here as a champion for you and me. And now to a service live and in progress with Yahweh, Ben Yahweh. Blessed be the King! How do we love our brothers and sisters? What is our motto? What is our motto? We're all for one. We want for our brothers and sisters. What about soup? And anything else? What is the duty of a Hebrew man? What is the duty of a Hebrew woman? And if either turns from the law, praise Yahweh. Who is God of God? Who is the King of Kings? Who is the Lord of Lords? Who is our President? Who is our Governor? Who is our Mayor? Who is our Leader? And who do we follow? 
Oh. And let everything that has breath. Oh. For color are all his prophets. Oh. For color is Israel. Oh. How many tribes of Israel? Oh. What's the name of the fourth tribe? Oh. What did Yahweh choose Judah to do? Oh. How long? Oh. How long is forever? Oh. What did Yahweh choose Judah to do? Who is Judah? We are. What did Yahweh choose you to do? Judah. How long? Forever. What did Yahweh choose you to do? Judah. How long? Forever. How long is forever? Judah. Yahweh chose who? Judah. Yahweh chose who? Judah. Yahweh chose who? Judah. Yahweh chose who? If you don't know that. Judah. Psalms 100. make you rich and to be a ruler over them. But if you go out and blaspheme my name and bring shame and a reproach on my name and my works, see, I'm going to have to punish you in the sight of the nations and show you and them I don't take that. So we have a contract with two conditions. If you obey and keep moral behavior and show moral behavior, I'm going to bless you. But if you show immoral behavior, I'm going to punish you. So that's what this is all about. Here's a part of the punishment. I will set my face against you. Read. And ye shall be slain before your enemies. That's a horrible thing, isn't it? That means kill. And all across America, all the day long, our enemies kill us. We are killed. Even we kill each other before our enemies. Read. They that hate you shall reign over you. The people, white people, they hate you. They shall rule over you. Who's your ruler? People that hate you. The politicians love you? No, they hate you. Why do they hate you? And why does Yahweh allow somebody who hates you to rule over you? You broke his laws. You broke your agreement with Yahweh. That's why we're suffering hell in America. Read. And ye shall flee when none pursueth you. And if ye will not yet for all this hearken unto me, then I will punish you seven times more for your sin. Mm-hmm. So Yahweh broke our pride. He broke our power. He broke our wealth. He took our country from us, our land. Delivered us into bondage under the white man here in America. Made us forget we even had a land. We forgot our name, forgot our God, forgot our history, our culture, our language, and our name. And lay here as a mentally dead people, not knowing that the creator of the universe is our very own father. And we are living under a people ruling over us who hate us, just like I promised I would do this to you. Now, have I kept my word? Then I promised Abraham in Genesis 15 and 13 that after 400 years of punishment, I would come back 
to save you and deliver you and judge your enemy, the white man. Let's go to it, Genesis 15, 13 and 14. that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years, and also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge, and afterwards shall they come out with great substance. Praise Yahweh. Am I here? Yes, Am I judging yes, the white people who rule over you these 400 years to treat you evil? Yes, well, I'm here to bring you out with great riches, too. I'm showing you I have the power to make you rich in the midst of your enemies while everybody's getting poor. I'm showing you that while everybody's going out of business, I'm putting you in business. While everybody, everybody else is losing property, I'm gaining property for you. That's enough for anybody who wants to see to understand that truly the mighty God is with us in our midst. Praise God. Now we can go back to Judges, chapter 2. Now we were, in a word, uh, provoked. Read on. Provoke, arouse, to bring on by inciting. Okay, uh, insight. Look up the word insight. Here she is, son, over here, up front. Read. <laughs> Insight. Insight. To provoke to action, stir up, or urge on. See, now we made Yahweh take action. We kept messing around until he took action against us. Now here in uh, Judges chapter 2, verse 14, read. And the anger of the Lord Yahweh was hot against Israel. Now turn the anger for me. The anger of Yahweh was hot against us because we forsook him, did evil in his sight, served false gods, turned their back on him, followed other gods, bowed ourselves down to them. Hot anger, too, not just anger. The anger of Yahweh was hot. Read anger for me. Anger, a feeling of extreme displeasure, hostility, indignation, or exasperation towards someone or something. Mm, mm, mm. Imagine the creator of the universe, a man that has the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of how to make a sun, moon, stars, galaxy, universe, planets, revolve around and make a seed grow out the ground and produce food. Imagine making him create a way to get back at you. I think he's quite resourceful. I believe that his ability being the creator, the creator, I believe he can come up with some unique way of taking out his anger on us. It's really dumb to keep testing him to see if you can psych him out or get around him. You really cannot get around the creator. 
he can figure out some ways to get to you. Oh, uh, hallelujah, way. But this comes about only because you provoke him. It is Yahweh's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. It's my good pleasure. It's written, that's the word. It is my good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Where is that? Some of my scholars. It is my good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Luke 12, 32. That's the scripture I have marked. See, it's not only my pleasure, but good pleasure. I mean, I really get something out of this. Giving you the kingdom is not, you. ooh, good gracious. <laughs> talking about good to me oh Yahweh that's better than anything I get more pleasure out of that than anything you can get pleasure out of being a being the creator you know I can oh you talk about a get off now that's the mighty get off of me just giving you the kingdom you think you bad huh devil you I mean you are bad but you think you mighty you think you got just watch me I'm going to get off giving my children the kingdom. Those who love me and serve me and worship me and bow down to me and not Balaam, oh, it's going to be my good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Praise Yahweh. Uh, uh, our orgasm does not begin to compare. That's my super orgasm. All right, read Luke 12, 32, read. Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Little flock means remnant. See, it's not a bunch of you right now. See, I mean, it's a whole bunch of my people in this city. You look around right now, you the little flock that want to serve me and worship me and, and give up everything that belongs to the white man to come and serve me. He said, no, I don't want to serve Balaam. I'm not going to serve him. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. I'm just going to serve my father. And I said, don't worry about it, little flock. Don't worry about giving up the white man. It's all right. What you worried about? I'm the creator my good pleasure to give you the kingdom, huh? Woo, Yahweh, talk about a super get off. Being supernatural, can you imagine how super my pleasure? Woo. It's a knockout, a real knockout. <laughs> my goodness, Yahweh. Mm, mm, mm. Serve. You gotta, I got to find out about serving now. It's been a long time since I've looked up serve. Serve. Remember, this is a law. We're talking about government by the judges. We've been delivered into the hands of the enemy because we forsook our father, Yahweh. You forsook me. Read. Serve. Sir. Here's what you did, here's what you have done for the white man, and I'm asking you to do that for me only. Our agreement was, to all of you that are alive this day, our agreement was you would only serve me. Full time. That was our agreement. And we made this agreement at Mount Horeb. Every one of you alive here this day, we made that agreement, you and I. And you said you would work for me and serve me full time. 
that all you have is mine. That you would keep nothing back for yourself. You would give all that you have to me. You wouldn't keep 26 cents in the bottom of your bag. All of it would be mine. Wouldn't matter what your mother, father, sister, brother, aunt, cousin, friend, or relative gave you, as soon as you get your hot little hands on it, you'll bring it straight to me. You wouldn't take it and use it and buy orange juice, quarts of orange juice, have it in your room on the table, or oh, butter. It will all be mine. Now that's our agreement. Now, when you don't keep our agreement, see, I'm going to punish you. I am definitely going to get you, my children. Because we have an agreement. I came to you, you were serving Balaam, the white man. False religion, that's the way I found you. And I called you out through my holy words. I brought your condition back to your remembrance. And you say, yeah, I knew I was different. I always knew I was different. I've always wanted to know who am I and why am I on this earth? What is my purpose on this earth? Now I answered your question and brought your remembrance back. Now, I could have just let you stay in your hell, but I call back to your remembrance your true history that you are Hebrew Israelite, that you are not a nigger. Your nationality is not black, colored, cool, negro, or spick, or spade, but your nationality is Hebrew Israelite. And you say, yeah, that's it. And the name of your God, your father, his name is Yahweh. And you say, I'm, that name, that sounds like it. That's, that, that's, I just know that's it. I never did believe in no church God, no Jesus. I just knew when I heard Yahweh's name, I said, that's it. Then you said, thank you for bringing back to my remembrance my father's name, Yahweh. Thank you, and for that I'm going to serve you the rest of my life. No more am I going to serve Balaam, but I'm giving my life to Yahweh now. And I don't care if mother doesn't like me, father, sister, brother, cousin, child, Husband and wife, I'm going for Yahweh all the way. And sure enough, they turned their back on me and I stuck with Yahweh because I, I'm aware now of our agreement. And here we are. Now I want to know how to serve you, Yahweh. You can only serve me in moral behavior. I said, I want all of you, my children, to be good. I want you all to be good. You got to serve me. Not Balaam, but serve me. You either serve Balaam or you serve me. Can't serve both. Matthew 6, 24. Let's go to Matthew 6, 24. You can't serve me and the white man too. That's just it. You can't serve both of us. You can't serve materialism and serve me. You got to make a choice. It's me or them. That's all to it. 
Now, when some leave, they want to try to pull you away with them to serve Balaam. Yahweh said if they try to entice you away from Yahweh, they worthy of death. They should die. They should be killed. They should already be dead if they try to entice you away from Yahweh. That's the law, too. Then with your father. See, you made an agreement. You have to remember what your dad is going to do to you. If you don't keep your agreement, you better keep on your mind the punishment of not serving your father. I'm here to remind you. Uh-huh. Now, let's understand what serve means. Serve to work for. Now, we have been serving white people. Who have we been working for? White people. Are white people your black guys? They don't even look like you. They don't smell like you. Who have we been working for? White people. Are white people your black guys? They don't even look like you. They don't smell like you. We have worked for white people. That's what serve means. We serve Balaam. So what do we do for Balaam? We work. We used to work for Balaam. Instead of working for Yahweh, we work for Balaam. Today, instead of working for Yahweh, we work for white people. That's what serve means. Come on. Serve. Be a servant to. You are servant to white people. Now that makes me upset. Every time I see you serving white folks, I'm very upset. You are inciting me to anger. I don't like it one bit. I love you, but I don't love you working for white people or being a servant to white people. You're supposed to work for me and be a servant to me. Your father, your creator, your reformer, your redeemer, your savior, your deliverer. That's who you're supposed to work for and be a servant to. But yet you are serving those and a servant to and working for those who have had you in slavery and bondage treated you evil 400 years. I don't even like that. Mm -hmm. To prepare and offer as food. To prepare food for. We prepare food for white people. We go in the kitchens and cook. We go in the restaurants and cook. Some restaurants are built on black chefs. They make millions of dollars a year from the black man back there in the kitchen sweating. If he didn't stay there and cook, the business would fail. White people stand in line for blocks to come and eat a black man cooking. Please turn to side two for part two of moral behavior.
but he doesn't make the millions. He's just a servant. He's just a preparer of food for Balaam. He comes up with a recipe, he offers it to the white man. Your enemy. No wonder we suffer and are poor. Serve. Serve. To place food before someone. We do it. We just as happy to be a waiter and a waitress for white folk. Oh, and we just look forward to being a waiter at a rich white country club. Hey man, they pay big tips out there, boy. How many ever heard that? I mean, consider it a great honor to put on a servant's uniform. Hmm? And walk with that tray. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, Mr. Yes, sir. It's an honor to serve you, Mr. White folks. Sure enough, sir. Yes, sir. Hope you enjoy your dinner, sir. Anything else you need, sir? Would you like a little water, sir? Need a little more ice in your water, sir? Uh, cigarette? Yes, sir. Be glad. What kind? What you smoke, sir? Wow. I'll be right back, sir. <laughs> Come back. Let me open this for you, sir. You need a light, sir. Ma'am? <laughs> By ourselves, the white people, and we offer them food. Are we guilty? Yes, sir. All of this service belongs to Yahweh and to each other. But instead of giving this loving service to Yahweh and each other, we give it to the white man. And I don't like it. It heats up my anger against you. You think it's all right to do this for white people, but you think it's evil to do it for me and each other. Read, serve. Serve. Wait on. Wait on. We wait on white people to call us to a job. We wait on white people to give us welfare and food stamps. We wait on white people as a waiter. We wait until white people call us to serve them. A waiter. Wait. Sometimes you run up and say, yes, sir. And then he go on talking to the white folks. Huh? And go on talking to his she-dog. Huh? And you standing there at attention, yes, sir. May I help you, sir? And then they act like you don't even exist for about five minutes. You know you better not walk. You better wait on them to give you an order. Because if you walk away, I'll have your job, boy. Uh, manager, I called your waiter, and he didn't wait on me. We hadn't made up our mind, but he didn't wait on me. Now, I have a lot of friends. As you know, me and my friends come here. We carry a lot of power in town. Either he goes or we have stopped coming here. I think you know who is just fixing to leave. <laughs> it ticks you off, but you know you better stand there and wait on, mm -hmm, sir. That's what it means. You have to wait on white folks to do with you whatever they want to.
You bring a steak, they say rare, then they tell you it's too rare, take it back. You go back, stick it on the stove, don't even let it turn over and get warm. Bring it back, they say it's too well done, take it back. You bring them the water, there's too much ice in it. You take it back, there's not enough ice, take it back. What you gonna do? Take it back and say, yes, I. Huh? What you gonna do? I mean, hey, sucker, I mean, you know, you don't like the water, get it yourself. No, you know you're not fixing to say that. <laughs> you might say that on your way out the door. You didn't even get your tip. You go back in the kitchen and kick a door. <laughs> Better be glad it's not a dog or cat in the building because you were kicking to death. But when you come back out from that kitchen, you're going to be smiling. <laughs> Am I right or wrong? We wait on white folks. We should be waiting on Yahweh and waiting on each other. But we think it's evil to wait on Yahweh and each other. So we rather wait on white folk who treat us mean and evil and wicked, cruel, inhuman. Come on. Serve. To provide goods and services for customers. We, they're not our customers. We don't own the business. Servant, we provide white folk with goods and services. Period. We shine their shoes. A nanny to their children, a nursemaid when the sucker can't hardly walk no more. Feed him when he get old, clean him up, wash his old filthy, filthy self. You you better not be a nurse. You don't not only do you have to pick him up, he got any kind of spunk in him, he wants to patch you, squeeze on it a little bit. Pinch it just a little taste. And you say, oh, Mr. So-and-so. <laughs> Why won't you walk off the job? See, you pay for that old raggedy car downstairs. That's why you won't leave. You want to leave, but you know, you, you want to pay for that old raggedy car you got. That may start mobile. <laughs> you got you may drive that other brand called may quit at any time <laughs> okay sir sir to supply goods or services to customers to assist the celebrant during mass to be of assistance to that's all we do is assist white folk in whatever they want to do. Instead of assisting Yahweh and each other, you assist your enemy. Uh-huh. Promote the interest of... You promote the interest of white people everywhere you go. Everything you do is for the white man. If white people kill one of your people, you say the nigga ought to be dead. If a black man talk about killing a cracker for killing his mama, you say you ought to leave that to the Lord. But when a white man kills your brother, you don't leave that to the Lord. You say, nigga ought to be dead. We promote the interests of white people. When white people open up a store in our neighborhood, we're going to shop there. Three black men in this city worked for Winn-Dixie, three Winn-Dixies as a manager, and each one of them were the managers of successful Winn-Dixies. White men shut them down, so they went to Overtown and opened up a grocery store, and niggas didn't shop. They had to shut it down. It's so sitting over there now, shut down. Niggas borrowed some dollars and went right down the street on 62nd and 7th, huh? 
and invited the white man to come back into the neighborhood and rob niggas under the name Winn-Dixie, and niggas are in there like flies. And it's three or four businesses right next to Winn-Dixie, and the niggas be in there by the thousands, and, but you don't see but a traveler every now and then going into the three black businesses. But they go into Winn-Dixie like flies. Why? Because the white man owns Winn-Dixie. If you want to see that store fail, let Win Dixie leave and say, nigger grocery. Or he can name it anything he wants to, but you, you just let the, let the niggas find out that they own it. Nigger own it. All of a sudden, something wrong with the bread. <laughs> Same bread. All of a sudden, the niggas ice is not as cold, sugar not as sweet, milk not as white. <laughs> oh, you know I'm right. Meat not as red, lettuce not as fresh, carrots are soft. <laughs> I mean, when we get through promoting the bad, if your brother own it, I mean, you will understand the curse we under. But we promote the interests of the one we serve, the white man. Think about it. Do we? Do our people promote the interests of themselves? No. You should be promoting the interests of Yahweh, my people but you serve the white man and promote his interest instead, hoping he will hire you. Why do you, it, how does the white man in Winn-Dixie pay his employees from you shopping there? Why do you have to go and let the white man talk to you like a dog and fire you and throw you away overwork you and underpay you when you could own the grocery store yourself and pay your own people? Why won't you promote your own interests? It's because you choose to serve Balaam rather than me, Yahweh. That's a curse for you. I'm going to get you for it, too. I'm, if I have to destroy all the white man's businesses in the whole country, I'm, I'm going to do it just to get you. If I have to close down every, every factory and every business and shut down the total economy, I'm going to do it just as sure as I put a hurricane on New Orleans this morning. And they, it just came out of nowhere. The devil say on the news, it just formed all of a sudden, and the people didn't have a chance to get away. Took two oil rigs down, drowned devils in the sea, and tore up New Orleans, flooded them out. They didn't know it was coming. It hit, and then the eye is hanging 50 miles off the shore. Now, they don't know which way I'm fixing to send it. That's going on right this second as I talk to you. I got that going on while I'm talking to you. And I said, I'm going to make the storms be worse and worse, ice and everything, plagues of every kind, be worse and worse on America until she lets you go. But see, letting you go means you're going to have to want to come to me. And in order to make you want to come to me, then I have to destroy America. Plague, that's Yahweh. So I'm going to fix it where there'll be no work for the head white man or you to tell niggas. So I'll have to hit the white head, knock him out. That's how I'm going to get you niggas. I'm going to make you hungry. You'll come to me. Don't worry. You're not going to have long. I'm going to get you in one day, one hour. Call a year. One hour means a year. I'm going to bring it all down within one year, and it's right at your door. I'm, I'm right at your door now. You don't, I know you don't believe me, but it's all right.
Hey, y'all, when I start these dominoes to fall in, nothing's going to stop it. And all I have to do is touch one. And I don't care how long, how, how many hours it takes for that bad boy to do, it's going to, all the dominoes going to fall. I'm doing things that you're not even hearing about. I'm doing things to America that you don't even hear on the news. Thank you for listening to our international broadcast. And now some announcements by Yahweh Ben Yahweh. I would like to once again thank you for listening. It is time for us to wake up nationwide. It is time for our people to come to Yahweh, return to Yahweh, and join the kingdom of Yahweh. For the end of this white man's world is at our very door. Come to Yahweh while you still have a chance. Run to Yahweh. Fly to Yahweh, for the kingdom of Yahweh is at hand. 2 Timothy 2.15 teaches us to study Yahweh ben Yahweh, which means to research all the facts about Yahweh ben Yahweh, seek to understand the nature of Yahweh ben Yahweh, and then learn how to apply all this information to better our lives individually and our nation Israel as a whole. Also, study in 2 Timothy 2.15 means that we should show ourselves approved unto Yahweh, the mighty God, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So I invite you to study and do your research. Some of the books and aids that you need in studying Yahweh is the dictionary, encyclopedia, and also go to your libraries and research the word and the name Yahweh. I highly recommend the following books for you to read and study and do research in. And they are the original Black Bible, the King James Version, the way it looked before the white man changed it. Also, you are not a nigger, Yahweh God of God. Also, let my people go. Also, the Hebrew Israelite Divine Dietary Law Book. Also, 100 Years of Lynching. And our many pieces of free literature and free catalog. Now, I would like to make a very exciting announcement, an earth-shaking announcement. I have a brand new book that is going to shake the entire planet Earth up. All nations on the Earth are going to be mourning over this book titled Yahweh Judges America. Yes, my brand new book, Yahweh Judges America, every family and all nations must have this book. Also, I would like for you to read The Mighty Black Man, which is highly symbolic with great information for us and our children. Wait, another announcement. I am releasing my second new book, which is for the entire family titled Yahweh Ben Yahweh Mathematics, Designed to Rule Forever. In this country, we as a people have never been taught how to count. In my book, Yahweh Ben Yahweh Mathematics, Designed to Rule Forever, I show you as the nation of Israel how we will continue to be prosperous and the ways we will continue to have good success. And remember, it's designed to rule forever. Also, I would like to encourage you to listen daily to the cassette tape lesson. You may take me in the quiet study room or while you are lying down in your bed with the lights out. You can listen to your cassette lesson and let Yahweh bin Yahweh bless your mind and bless your home. Also, you should be playing the music of Yahweh in your home and invite your friends to play the music of Yahweh in their homes, such as we have the world's best-selling underground album on cassette tape, titled, for example, Let My People Go by Elder Gideon, and also in another album, Spread the News by Elder Yosef. These two great best-selling tapes you will enjoy highly, and they are musical tapes by Yahweh. Now available is Yahweh's demo tape, which are samples of each album cassette tape. You should want to own in your home or play them in your car. Every Hebrew Israelite should own and play Yahweh music. There are seven tapes you must have. One, Songs of Zion. Two, Let My People Go. Three, Yahweh Our Messiah. All by Elder Gideon. Four, Spread the News by Elder Yosef. Five, 
Yahweh, God of God, by Josiah Ben, plus six, summer tour part one, and seven, summer tour part two. Also, I would like to invite all of you listening to this broadcast to help wake our people up. Spread the news about Yahweh and his son, Yahweh Ben Yahweh. Testify about Yahweh Ben Yahweh. Go out and make 1,000 friends among our people. My dearly beloved brothers and sisters, I would like to invite you to write me. Write for more information about Yahweh and the greatest movement in the world today, the kingdom of Yahweh. Whenever the elder is not answering you locally as you might desire, then feel free to write me here at headquarters in Miami for more information. You may feel free to write me personally anytime you choose here in Miami, Florida, 2766 Northwest 62nd Street, zip code 33147. We want you to know that we are now a worldwide movement in 15 countries. People all over the world, in the Caribbean islands, in the northern tip of South America, in Africa, Hawaii, Philippines, Korea. They are receiving our literature and reading about Yahweh and his son, Yahweh ben Yahweh. And they are also accepting Yahweh as God. In America, we are in over 655 cities. And we have over 5 million people who are reading our free literature and our free newsletter every month all over America. Can you imagine 5 million so-called black people in America reading about Yahweh and his son Yahweh ben Yahweh every month? This makes Yahweh and his son Yahweh ben Yahweh the most powerful voice among our people here in the hells of North America. It is very important that you who accept Yahweh as your God and believe on the name Yahweh ben Yahweh, the son of Yahweh, that you get your name entered into the Lamb's Book of Life. So you need to write me for a Lamb's letter. If you would like to have your original Hebrew name and you are tired of going in the white man's name, you are tired of having a slave name after being free over 100 years, you are ashamed to have a slave name that your foreparents were forced to take during slavery, then write me for your Lamb's letter and I will send it to you quickly by return mail. The scripture is, Revelation chapter 20, verse 15. So return to Yahweh today. Join the greatest and fastest moving organization on the planet Earth, helping our people here in the land of North America. We, the so-called black people of America, are the ones standing in the greatest need and help. We need help more than anyone on Earth. Lastly, I would like to invite you to send your tithes, your donations, and your offerings to headquarters. Send them directly here to headquarters in Miami, Florida, 2766 Northwest 62nd Street, zip code 33147. Send all your tithes, offerings, and donations to headquarters so that I will know what you are doing directly myself. Read Malachi chapter 3, verses 6 through 10, and govern your life accordingly. Once again, it is a pleasure talking to you, and I have truly enjoyed this session that we have had today. Call your friends and tell them about this wonderful wonderful program and come and be with us. We meet every night at our local YU in your city. YU means Yahweh University, where we offer the highest degrees known to man on the planet Earth. Come and join this one hour of letting me bring you a message directly from my father Yahweh to you. And then you may study and learn of Yahweh being Yahweh according to Matthew chapter 11 verse 29. You must take my yoke upon you and learn of me, and that will make you God, according to Psalms 82, verse 6. And after class, fellowship. Get to know one another and love one another and have wonderful times together. Also, the most important thing you can do after this is remember the appointed feast in Miami where Yahweh chooses to place his name according to Deuteronomy chapter 16. You should not miss one feast. Make arrangements now. Start saving now. Make your plans now. Some of the other feasts and holidays that you should be aware of and keep are the Feast of Weeks on May 20th, 1986. Once again, that's the Feast of Weeks, May 20th, 1986. 
Then celebrate with me at home the memorial blowing of trumpets on September 8, 1986 at sundown. In the future, I will make tapes available to you on these holidays so that you may enjoy them in your home. Ten days later, you must keep the Day of Atonement on September 17th at sundown. This day may be kept in the quietness of your home. You should fast and pray for 24 hours without food or water, asking Yahweh to forgive you of your many sins. Then on September 21st, beginning at sundown, I'll see you personally once again for the Feast of Tabernacles. That's September 21st through the 29th. Don't miss this exciting feast that Yahweh, our God, demands that we keep here at International Headquarters in Miami, Florida. It is his law that you meet me at the Feast of Tabernacles and not come empty-handed. Yahweh bin Yahweh's disciples and followers are saving a $360 gift for the feast. If you are unable to come, send it at that time. I will not be making a 1986 summer tour, so you must come to the feast. I want to see you personally and bless you and your family personally. I want to bless your home and bless you. September 21st through the 29th. Always remember that Yahweh is God, and besides Yahweh, there is no God. Now there's one more very important announcement I want to make because I love you. We have produced for you Yahweh kosher products. Yahweh kosher products means that there are no additives, no preservatives, no poison, nothing that will hurt you or harm you in any way. These products have been tested and tried and have been on the market for over two years. All over America, in every major city, people are familiar with Yahweh products, and they are Yahweh hair food, Yahweh shampoo, Yahweh conditioner, Yahweh's hand and body lotion, Yahweh's facial natural products, Yahweh soap carbolic, which helps to get rid of rashes and other skin problems and blemishes. Also, you may send for our free catalog describing these products and many, many others. So we are the ones who love you and care about you and are giving you products that are the best for you. So you may order these products. These are products that you can order only from headquarters. This is a mail order product only directly from headquarters. So if you would like to have the best products in the world for you and your family that will help you instead of hurting you, then you send for a Yahweh catalog and we will wreck it to you by return mail. It seems that Yahweh is never finished with giving us excitement and new products and causing us to make new announcements. Once again, a new first. All over America, our women have requested famous natural oils, perfume scents. A world famous example is Giorgio. We have what you want. Remember, we have what you want. This is our wonderful introductory offer, Giorgio, world famous. You will never beat our prices. Always remember that our motto is one God, one mind, one love, and one action. And above all, never forget that Yahweh loves you, and so do I. Shalom, shalom.